back home and let's plan something. Okay, I'm going to tell the whole people in my village how beautiful forest looks like. I'm going to call them all and bring them back, okay? You can also do that. You can tell your mama. And let's see, okay? Champa is in the Mama, 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 why don't we go to the other part of the town? Uh, uh, wall? <laughs> mama, it's mama. So beautiful. Mama, mama, I want to see that. You can see. All of us can go and have fun. Mama, mama. So Bichvi and Toh are yearning to see each other's fulfilled. Now they really want to explore each other's home. Right? And so Bichvi has gone and told everybody in our village how beautiful the forest is and how it is on the other side of the world. So all the villagers are all excited too because they want to go and see the forest. So all the villagers get together and... Cheek and say goodbye to 
me. Oops, where am I falling? Ah, because you want to hear the story. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so, so you just, and then you are fading off. Also is, you know, very wow. gradual. Wow. Now, suppose I want to tell us a scene, change of scene, where they lived the, uh, there was a bird. Now, this bird, oh. early morning, and it's flying and feeling very nice, and tweet, 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 I am the biggest. And nobody is bigger than me. Wow, oh, I'm the biggest animal on this earth. And there are two men who are listening to it. And as they were listening, and you can bring the other character, you can bring any character. I'm just creating the story for you now because of the sticks that I have. Okay. So there comes this water, uh, let's say an alien from yeah. outer planet. And he says, mm, you are not the biggest. I said, you are not the biggest. Then, there is someone who is bigger than you. Really? And where? Well, if you go to the Pacific Ocean, you will find Pacific Ocean? Yeah, that's what I said. <coughs> okay, maybe I'll go to the Pacific Ocean next. So you can again say the Pacific. And he goes to the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> and as he is flying, whom does he see? He sees the... <laughs> and as he is flying, and so you can also change your seat and he's flying and he comes, he's so tired and he's sitting, very, very tired. And then after a while when he wakes up, there's a sound. So who's this? I'm the alligator and you disturb me. Uh, oh yeah, he's much bigger than me. Oops, oh God. You think I'm big? <coughs> ah, I can eat you. Wahoo! <laughs> and so, now the alligator. So you can introduce. Now the alligator is saying that he's the biggest. He feels he's the biggest. Then you can introduce again the alien saying that you're not the biggest and if you go so you can keep introducing a character and then so the yeah. and he's moving and moving and he's sailing and what happens it's very late and it's the night and whom does he see ah, Right? So, 
you can add and you can say that in the night, you know, there's this ghost. It's nice to have things flying and ghosts yeah. appearing and disappearing. All that you can do with this. And I, I don't know if you know, you, you saw the monkey which was uh, facing the front. Now this is the monkey that faces the side. Now for the monkey and the crocodile story, yeah. Oh. So this is the monkey and the crocodile. And how it says. And then we have a tree. So you just introduce the tree and then the monkey sitting on the tree and talking to the crocodile. So you can do wonders. So fox in the crow story sitting on the tree and you know and then jumping. Okay, let's go. Then you change the scene into a water scene. Mm. You just drop yeah. uh, yeah. right. So once upon a time, in a deep dark forest, there was a man eater on the pro on the prowl. He was an old tiger that uh, was very popular amongst the animals because the animals and nature thought that he was doing a favor, getting rid of the pesky people that lived in, a, in the village adjacent to the forest. So uh, he was looking for his meal, it was dusk and uh, while he was prowling the jungle he, he stumbled upon a goat tied to a stump and he looked extremely angry, the goat looked extremely angry for some reason. So he started stalking the animal <coughs> behind these bushes and he noticed that uh, he could hear, he could, the goat could sense the rustling of the, of the bushes but uh, it didn't seem to be scared at all for some reason. So the tiger got curious and he moved towards the goat and he asked him, uh, how come you're not scared? Aren't you scared that you're going to get killed? So the goat looked up at the tiger and said, there's no point, I'm not scared at all because there's no point being scared right now because one, either you're going to eat me or two, the guy sitting on top waiting for you to kill you, the, macham, the, the hunter in the macham is going to make me a chicken, a mutton biryani in the end of the day if you don't come about. So uh, I don't see a reason why I should be scared. So the, the tiger was like, he was thinking for a while, he was like, uh, now what do I do? Because he has a, a liking for a human meat. He's not actually interested in fast food. He has a small little goat. It's not <laughs> going to fill his belly. So the goat uh, realizes that the tiger is hesitating. So he says, I've got a small little idea. Uh, we'll wait for the hunter to get up. He's fallen asleep because he's absolutely bored. So, and uh, he's in a deep sleep. So he cannot hear this conversation that's happening between the tiger and the, and the goat. So the goat says, let's wait for this guy to get up in the morning. And when he's untying me, you know, you can pounce on him and you can have your, have your, uh, have your nice meal. And I can be free and I don't have to, you know, uh, worry about, uh, getting uh, killed by either a tiger or becoming somebody, somebody else's dish. So uh, both the tiger and the goat decide to be quiet and wait for the sun to rise. And early in the morning, the hunter gets up and he's cursing, my God, now what am I going to tell the villagers? They've hired me to shoot the man-eater and uh, I haven't been able to do anything about it as yet. So he slowly gets down the machan and while he is untying the goat, the tiger pounces on him and kills him and eats him up. And so the the tiger has his belly full and uh, the goat decides to try his luck by not getting sold in the market or getting killed by a wild beast and he's free to live the rest of his life in doubt whether mm -hmm. what's going to happen to me next. So that's the story of my angry goat. Yeah. <laughs> this story about the gecko. So this is a nice colourful one. So this is a story that our talking tree is narrating. So uh, starts off there. So once upon a time, when I was standing here, like I've been all this while, there was a lizard who would travel all around land and eat flies for lunch, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, he was, he couldn't eat, uh, he, he couldn't climb any place, he could only walk on land and, uh, and, and he would roam around finding uh, flies and he was very good at it. 
okay so this is our okay so he was very good at it and uh, and he would uh, every morning he would set out go catch a lot of flies come back and uh, and you know over a period of time he started catching so many flies that he started feeling very proud of himself so he would come back and he would get, uh, go near the pond and speak to the turtles and the fishes and tell them how he caught so many flies where he went how how brave he is and things like that this would happen every day and, and one day when he uh, when he was doing his regular routine in the evening behind the rocks were the little frogs who had heard about who had heard about these about mr gecko boasting about where he catches flies and these and these little frogs were all waiting they they were all sitting behind the rocks and quietly listening to what the gecko had to say the gecko said ah oh, i have had a good meal today and you know what i found a new place this is a place near the hills and there are lots of juicy flies there i'm going to go there tomorrow also and i'm going to eat and for another month i have nothing to worry about so all the frogs listen to this and after the gecko had left the frogs jumped out and they went ribbit 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 and a whole team of 100 frogs went to the mountains and they finished all the flies that night the next morning gecko went there. gecko went there and he couldn't find a single fly he said oh maybe they all left okay never mind i'm anyway so good at it i'll find another place so he goes and he searches and he finds another place near under a, a, a you know under a big rock he finds a lot of flies so he eats that then he comes back and again in the evening at his assembly with all his turtles and fishes he narrates this entire story saying ah today i didn't find uh, flies where i found yesterday so today i found another place and there also i had a good meal so everybody claps for him and the frogs are still standing and waiting behind waiting to hear the location so he says tomorrow also i'm going there in any case there's so many flies beneath that rock so then the frogs hear that and after the gecko leaves they go rave it rave it rave it rave it rave it and they go catch the flies that night and they come back then mr gecko goes there next morning he can't find any flies he wonders what's happening so then he says okay i'll find another place he goes to another place he finds some more flies he fills his tummy comes back boasts about it the frogs hear it and they go rivet 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 and go and eat up all the flies now after some time the gecko can't find any new places so he keeps searching and searching and searching and he can't find a single fly so one day goes by two days go by after three days he gets really hungry and then he slowly crawls near the tree near me so he came crawling near me and he said and he was almost on the verge of fainting so then what happened then i gave him an idea i said oh gecko he looked up and then i said gecko i have an idea you look really hungry let me help you out can you see the fig the old fig that's hanging from my uh, right branch he said yeah can you see there's so many flies going around it he said yeah so he said why don't you catch them so then he said no but i can't climb i can only walk on the ground so he said oh okay uh i can perhaps shake them and maybe the fruit will fall so he says no the fruit will fall but the flies won't come down they'll fly away so then they think a little bit and then then the tree says uh okay i have an idea why don't you do one thing go a little to my right and you'll find some sticky mud there go dab your feet on that and come back i'll tell you what to do so he goes dabs his feet on that and he come and as he's coming back he's finding it very difficult because every place he puts his feet his feet get stuck so then he finds it very difficult and he comes to the tree and he says what have you done i'm hungry and you're making me uh, making it difficult for me to even walk 
He says, okay, now try climbing. He says, huh? Climbing? With my sticky feet? So he said, yeah, precisely. So then he puts his feet, gets stuck. And he says, okay, now lift your feet and move them. Lift your feet and move them. And slowly the gecko climbs the tree. And then slowly and carefully he goes near the fig plant and he eats up all the figs. And then he comes back down and the tree says, now so that you're not you don't get tired walking, go rub your feet on the on, on, on my roots and you can walk back. So the gecko is really happy and he says, Thank you so much, O tree. What can I do for you? So the tree says, No, I've been noticing you. You've been going around boasting about your catch every day. If there's one advice I can give you is that learn to be quiet and don't boast about your uh, meal. So that way your tummy will be full and you will concentrate more on catching more flies. So he says, okay, fruit, you catch the flies, come back. Then one day what happens is he goes and uh, he again rubs his leg on the thing and he's in a hurry. So he quickly climbs up, eats the thing and he comes down and when he's about to rub his feet on the root, he sees that there wasn't any clay on his feet. So then he says, hey tree, look at what has happened. So the tree says, you could always climb. The, the clay was just a way to show you how. And you can climb any place and you can eat whatever you want. So the gecko is, is, is very very happy and he, he's, he says that I'll always remain quiet and I will uh, you know I, I, I will also not boast about uh, all of this.